strange thing happened in 1998 for Star Wars collectors. Suddenly, there was new Star Wars in production. Well, while today we're getting constant new Star Wars thanks to Disney Plus and, well, the Disney ownership of Star Wars, at the time, we thought this was groundbreaking. Here it came, Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Well, actually, at the time, it was just Episode 1. In fact, Hasbro didn't even get to know the name of the movie to put it on the packaging. The packaging just said Episode 1 for the official line. But the lead-up, the promo, the hype, well, we'd really never seen anything like this before. The idea was these new characters, ships, villains, planets, well, this was going to be a new generation's cognitive schema for what Star Wars was. And while it was a hit and made a lot of money and... Hey, a big part of it was due to the, uh, you know, cool, sexy, young stars. Well, okay, maybe not Jake Lloyd, but, you know, Natalie Portman and Ewan McGregor and all that. Hey, we were jazzed. We were getting new Star Wars, and that meant everything was soon going to be Star Wars. I mean, the merchandise and promos for this movie were off the chart. You basically couldn't walk out of your house the summer of 1999 without running into a pod race or a Darth Maul or, heck, we even got Star Wars Pogs. Elf Pogs. Remember Elf? He's back in Pog form. Not to mention Coke cans. Well, actually, Pepsi cans and Doritos. And my God, you could probably have an entire four-course meal of sugary snacks and drinks all with Darth Maul, and, well, your dentist would be happy. So while Episode One was going to be everywhere in 1999... In 1998, before the movie came out, well, we had a certain movie star, i.e. Samuel L. Jackson, who is well known as a huge action figure fan. He's an action figure collector, much like you or I, except he probably has a much larger bank account, not to mention dozens of action figures of himself. He loves having action figures of himself, and hey, who wouldn't? It's a really cool thing, and pretty much being a Hollywood star or a toy brand manager is your only way to this, uh, I guess, lifelong accomplishment. And who wouldn't want an action figure of you getting your arm bitten off by a dinosaur? I mean, come on, that's awesome. While not every single toy line in the world has a token Samuel Jackson figure, he's probably had close to more figures than any other actor. Well, technically Mark Hamill has had more action figures than any actor, but they're all of the same character. When I'm saying Samuel Jackson, I'm meaning he has toys from so many different movies. I mean, not every movie has had an action figure, but for episode one... Samuel Jackson's love of toys was going to help propel him to be the very first prequel figure ever. And that's why he makes a video today, or makes it into this video. So, leading up to the hype of Episode 1, Mace Windu, Jedi Master, played by Samuel Jackson after he asked George Lucas to cast him in a Tonight Show interview. Well, I mean, not directly to George, but to the camera. And, well, not only did he get cast, but his love of action figures and his willingness to participate in merchandise led to his very first figure, and this figure was offered as a mail-away over a year before the film came out. We got a mini bio of Mace, we got an image of him sitting in the chair for the Jedi High Council, and at the time when we had never experienced the prequels or knew pretty much anything about them, every tiny little detail that came out was just mind-blowing, and this was really the first time that we got to see what a Jedi looked like in Episode 1. Realizing that, oh, that's the same outfit Obi-Wan wore in Episode 4. That's actually a Jedi outfit. How cool. Obviously, we would get many, many Mace Windu figures, but there's something very special about this one. One is because it came in Power of the Force packaging, so before Episode 1. And two, he had a blue lightsaber. This is significant because, well, as most people know, Samuel Jackson and his love for all things purple, see uh, Unbreakable for more of that, he asked George in episode two, when he was actually going to wield a lightsaber, to make it purple. And, well, George being George said, hey, sure, why not? The actual reason was he wanted to make sure people could see him and identify him on screen when there were so many other Jedi in the Geonosis battle. So he felt having a purple lightsaber would, well, help him stand out. This did not become canon until Episode 2, and even though technically in Episode 1 his lightsaber was purple, but it was just never ignited, all of the merchandise had blue as his lightsaber. So, that's cool. Actually, there's probably some kind of, like, you know, expanded universe thing explaining this. 
Now, he did get a regular figure, obviously, in the Episode 1 launch, which came with that blue lightsaber. It was the same figure as the preview, just with a slightly modified robe. You can see the robe now had a hood on it and is completely removable, as opposed to the robe that had on the preview figure, which included sculpted sleeves. Now, eventually, there would be a 6-inch version of this character released as a commemorative figure for the 50th anniversary, and note that the figure, while his hood is down in the package, he does have that purple lightsaber for Episode 1. So I guess this confirms that his lightsaber was always purple and never blue. I think there might be some expanded universe stuff explaining that or something. I don't know. There's expanded universe stuff explaining why there's ice cream makers running around Cloud City. All right, so as far as Mace Windu being the star of Episode 1, well, not really. But he had significant screen time sitting and standing and putting his hood down, putting his hood up, and, you know, hanging out behind... Palpatine, wait a minute, that's not Mace Windu, oh my god, they changed him in that Naboo scene and just put some other actor there. No one even noticed! It's kind of like when they changed those uh, backup characters from Thor, all the actors in the second Thor movie are different and nobody even noticed. Alright, besides Mace Windu, there was a second preview figure, adding to the hype and build-up for episode one, which was the Stap and Battle Droid. Again, presenting a brand new, never before seen concept. And oh, look and behold, the retail Stap with Battle Droid has an ad on it for Mace Windu. It all comes together in one happy, awesome merchandising program. It's like the circle of life. Now, the Stap was cool, and it introduced us to what would be the, the Battle Droids, which Lucas considered sort of the stormtroopers of episode one, even though that's kind of the clone troopers of episode two, but you know, you can't tell your troopers without a program. It had firing projectile missiles and a stand to simulate the flying. Now, the Staps, though, while everyone was excited about getting the preview figure, they really didn't show up that much in the movie. They were in there for, like, one scene in the swamp. Now, we all know there's nothing sexier than a battle droid. I mean, except for maybe, like, you know, Ian Malcolm. But, well, I don't know. This one didn't wind up as part of my permanent classic trilogy collection, while Mace Windu did. Why? Well, I suppose because, I don't know, Battle Droids were released at retail and obviously had their single card release for Episode 1 in lots and lots of colors because, well, let's face it, a Battle Droid was pretty much a toy maker's dream come true. If you have one tool and you can issue it in multiple decos, in the case of Episode 1, it got issued as dirty and lightsaber damaged. Eventually, for Episode 2, we would get red battle droids, so again, Toy Maker's dream come true, we could take the same tool and now just cast it in a different plastic and resell it. The staff would also be resold at retail with a, another version of the battle droid, well, actually the same one from the preview figure, <laughs> as part of the Episode 1 line proper, now in a long window box, and eventually Toys R Us would get one in the Clone Wars line, redecoed and Add to it was the added to it, excuse me, was the separatist symbol, showing that it was, you know, we were now moving into the Clone Wars. So while we did get used to battle droids from the trailer and that cool scene on the staff in the swamp, uh, you know, it just didn't have enough screen time to really make it truly memorable, I guess for me personally. But hey, for those for we, when it was out as a preview figure, we were excited. But getting Mace Windu, that was something really cool. It was our first Jedi and our first prequel figure ever. And I sort of unofficially consider it a classic trilogy figure because the prequels weren't out and it was released in classic trilogy packaging. So, hey, why not? We all like to make up our own rules. But there it was, our first Mace Windu and our first prequel figure. A great way to kick things off. <laughs>